hold on, hold on, let me take a sip. Yay, Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm a little sleepy this morning. I'm just, I have so many things on my plate. I chose to do none of them this morning. Oh, I love that for you. Overwhelmed and angry is my day. So I need to change my space right now. I was up late, probably the latest I've been up in a very long time. Christmas shopping last night. So I was very sleepy. This Did you get stuff done though? It's like Not a random same. Tuesday night to go Christmas shopping. You no, just I felt was, inspired. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no. In bed on my, with my thumbs. Oh. So, <laughs> gotcha. Did I get anything done, though? No. I bought dumb stuff for a Christmas project that I'm working on, but not that I signed myself up for, but not and, remotely the the things I presents. No. No. And I know that you were shopping yesterday for dresses because you had accidentally sent me a text. <laughs> yes. Because I was worried. So I have a wedding on Friday. Um, which I'm so excited about just to go and like see other people and it's an opportunity to get dressed up and the whole thing Friday night wedding in New Hampshire I'm all excited it's in a barn that'll be fun and it's a formal wedding that'll formal be wedding cold at Christmas time bring it on well I'm assuming there will be heaters I think it's like a barn like vibe okay, you know what I mean gotcha. yeah like, I don't think people really get married in barns anymore I think it's like <laughs> gotcha so, and it'll be beautiful. Like holiday. I heard from people who know about the wedding, like full holiday. I'm like, great. I am in it. This is like my jam. Me and yeah. My I like it. Sparkles and velour and. Yes. So lush, what happens? I tell myself, things. I tell myself like, Tori, you have a million things in your closet. Like on no planet do you need to buy something for this wedding. You are literally the queen of Christmas. Well, I put everything on on Monday in my closet and it's all horrible. Yeah. All of it is horrible. So there I was at like 11 o'clock on Monday night, like overnighting things, hoping that they get here in time. I still don't know. Nothing has arrived to my door. I'm, I'm a little bit best. stressed. I'm a little bit stressed because then I don't know what dress I'm going to wear. So I don't know what shoes to wear. I don't know what color to do my nails. I don't know how to do my hair. Now I'm like, I'm all I'm all a mess. And if you're a woman, you'll understand this problem. And if you're one of my male listeners, you'll just be like, that sounds like Tori. And that's it. That's all you know. I always forget the shoes because I have very I can't have very specific footwear situations because I have oh. terrible feet. So it's always like, ugh, I have to wear comfortable shoes anyway. Yeah. So I'm just anticipating whatever shoes I wear to not wear the whole time. So I'm gonna wear it for the look in the ceremony and then we'll change. But like if I'm wearing a black sparkly dress, can I wear magenta heels? Is I say yes. Not? But I have like full the Christmas plaid heels too. I have all kinds of stuff, which is why I didn't think I needed to shop it. Now I've spent four hundred dollars overnight dresses <laughs> in multiple sizes to make sure that I have something to wear. Tis the it season, was, everyone. It was the realization that like everything in my closet was either boring or too tight, and it was like, I hate that. Mm, my Forever Twenty One green velvet dress from ten years ago doesn't fit anymore. Oh Arr! no! What to so. do? Get new ones. It's a good way to go through your closet and change things around, I guess. Yeah, I was going to hoard it forever and then eventually get rid of it in another decade when it really doesn't fit. <laughs> Pretty much. But I was finding, though, I had a fun jumpsuit that I thought I might wear and it's sparkly and I'm in black and navy blue. And I put it on and it was a little too tight. It showed off like a little too many of the assets for a family yeah. wedding. Um, but it occurred to me, it is like, the perfect Taylor Swift concert outfit for Midnight's. So I was like, well, that can stay just in case. This girl. Just in case I end up going to Eras Tour again. Just in case. Um, This was not in our episode, but the Swifties were Swifting last night. It was in a what deep, now? deep, deep area of Instagram. Spotify, we think today, is making some sort of Taylor Swift announcement. They dropped puzzle pieces in stories all over different playlists and put billboards up all over the world of like different puzzle pieces. And of course the internet be interneting and trying to put all the pieces together. My theory is that it's either announcing that Taylor Swift is like the number one global top artist, which will be a very big deal or we're getting another album. One of the two. Okay. That's kind of but. a big swath of things. No. It was, yeah, but the, it was, you, we don't really know. 
but Spotify's in on it, so I can tell we you that. We don't know. We don't know. But there's pictures of friendship bracelets and cats with scarves on and Taylor Swift and clouds. It's definitely Taylor Swift something, so we'll find out. I'm excited. Well, I'm happy for you. Let's get into what's roasting. Okay, for a second. <laughs> it's, I don't get I just don't get it, so I'm trying to be polite. <laughs> okay, but acknowledge in some capacity the influence in the magnitude that this artist has to take over something like spotify in a surprise capacity like, i'm not this surprised. i don't think that's surprising it's just what taylor swift does is just kind of take over i love it though <laughs> like how cool is that like she's the biggest Good artist for you i love i love it i'm not mad just at her the magnitude of the artist that she is to be able to do it i think is what's crazy okay it's okay What's roasting? Um, I don't know. You tell me. What is going on? Well, we can start with Macaulay Culkin because I already thought he had a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I didn't realize kinda, it. I feel like every time we have one of these stories where we're giving somebody a star, our overall consensus is, I'm shocked that he didn't already. Right. Like, what is the parameter? It's kind of like, how do you, how does one get decided that this is the year that you get it? And how do you Is it just like in a, in a line situation? And by the way, I love everything about Macaulay Culkin and how he's grown up in front of our eyes and like managed to kind of pull himself out of his emo stuff and I put quietly, him on my death league quietly just be re like really healthfully adulting with Brenda is he, Song is he into something weird now like race car driving or something I feel like I'm gonna google that I feel like he's into like NASCAR or something was it I'm him sure. or someone else I feel like that was like an Ed, another child star the guy from Malcolm in the middle. Oh, that's the guy. Yes. He's also confusing. yeah. <laughs> that's the guy in my death league. Okay. Who's like guaranteed to get into a crash of some kind. And you're young, so I want those. Points. No, Macaulay Culkin is just like grown up in quietly, like not married, but together and parenting. Him and Brenda Song have two kids together. And they're Cute. just something about his face shape freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> like I just never even as a little kid I was like that's a weird looking kid like I never found him like potato alluring. like <laughs> I don't know I just never found him alluring but I thought great. he was pretty good. funny doing the MasterCard commercial for uh, Christmas oh yeah and you know just finding a way to make a couple of bucks and doing his Macaulay Culkin quiet thing but um, I'm here for it I think I'll need to watch that movie put it on the list yeah. Oh, definitely. It's like, oh my God, when the 10. robbers go try to go down the stairs and they slip on the ice, there's like some moments that movie that are like so ingrained in your brain. Yeah. And Joe Pesci definitely it, it made that movie. Oh, what yeah. It is also. They're like big deal actors, too, the robbers. But in my mm -hmm. brain, they're just the robbers of that movie. And then they have separate <laughs> it's careers. Joe Pesci. You know what I mean? I know, but yes. like in my brain, they're like, they're that. There's that character. And then yeah. a separate person that has a whole career separate from that movie. <laughs> and also, can you process the fact that Macaulay Culkin is 43 years old? I don't no! think I had. What? I just didn't process that he is. I suddenly feel so young. That doesn't happen <laughs> often. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. I was like, wait a minute. He's only like a year younger than me. What? How old are his, how old are his, his kids? They're little. They're all not right. all that old. Is Brenda Song that much younger than him? Uh, I don't think. Mid 30s? Yeah, I think she's late 30s also. Oh, okay. But I love it. I'm excited for him. Go get that Hollywood star. Um, What is this about Guy Fieri signing on another $100 million deal with the food Who, network? I put it there because I wanted to ask an actual question. Who likes Guy Fieri? I find him gross. When I see him eating things, it turns me away from food. I ate at one of his restaurants. I did not like it. I do not like, like Guy Fieri. I feel like $100 million is a lot of money for a network that is mostly supported by like a community of 60 and up who are only watching their TV because they don't know how to work any of the streaming services. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I just feel like it's a whole lot of money and I don't I find him so unlikable. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just don't where I just don't know where the market is for it for that much money. Maybe it's yeah. not that much money, but it feels They're like, to me like he's a not lot going anywhere. I'm like, why who wants him? Why but, is this, where was like, it gonna go? I was more concerned about the network overall than I was yeah. about like Guy Fieri. And that being said though, 
food is a big business. People like to go and watch those yeah. shows. Maybe I'm not against his diners and drives and whatever. Maybe it's just watching him eat makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. I support that. What well, is the great bit British baking show? Is that hosted by Food Network or somebody else? Um, that's all that's streaming a though. Question. I do like that show. I think there's a market for it on the streaming services as well. Shows like that that like suck us young millennials in that we have to watch. They do the Halloween Wars. That one's good. I'm trying to see what network it's actually on. I is it a BBC show? I don't know. I really I don't, don't know either. It's, I know we can watch it on Netflix, but no, I think I don't, it's... And I don't mean to be. Yeah, it's owned by the BBC. So that's not even Food Network. No. Hmm. That I can watch. That doesn't turn me off. Even though the guy that runs that show kind of looks like Guy Fieri. <laughs> then if that's the case, like I couldn't tell you one show that's on the Food Network. I'm. It's like all the Giadas and the Bobby Flays and the... Okay, I couldn't tell you one show on the Food Network that I was positive was still running. Yeah, all like, of those. I would be like, Rachel Ray, isn't she done? Like, Guy Fieri, no. isn't he done? Like, that, you know, that's Alton what my Brown. I can, I can name some of the top stars, but I don't know. And something. There are a few of them that I do know. I just don't know what their show or their lineup looks like at the Food Network at this point in time. Is Food Network owned by Hallmark? Or are we like two different companies that just should probably align? No, I'm sure that they're owned by like whatever. You know how they're all like groups, like Home Shopping Network, and then this one. Yeah, this I feel one. Like, like Home Shopping Network, there. Hallmark Channel, and Food Network should all be the same people, right? Like, just put on like baking shows in a loop. It's the only thing we want to say. <laughs> Those are the shows for sixty plus. I yes. don't know where their remote is. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or just like don't know how to work. Like even though they have the Netflix button on the remote, they That's still a big don't know button. How to work. I can't figure it out. And then they get logged out, and they're locked out for three months till their grandkids come home. Like that's the people who watch Food Network. I'm sorry. I love and it. And Palmer yeah. Egan, I'm sure, also watches the Food Network. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So Jennifer Lawrence quickly addressing people bothering her because she looked really good in a photo. That bothers me. I think You're it's like so she has funny. no wrinkles today. I was like, good for her. Yeah. People think that they got plastic surgery because her makeup has been so good. And she right? was having a conversation with Kylie Jenner, who she, which I think is so funny to put the two of them in a room because Kylie can be very funny. So I'm sure the two of them had this very dynamic conversation. I hope we can get some video. Um, but she was like, Jennifer Lawrence was like, yeah, I got, I got a new makeup artist and he does my eyes a little differently. And now I have to tell the internet that, no, I did, in fact, not get plastic eye surgery. I just have a new makeup artist. Just funny. And also goes to show you that makeup is an art and you can create whatever you want for people to look the whatever way they want to. Is we she, all have TikTok and watching those I stupid know. makeup tutorial videos and how people completely change their entire space. Oh my and god, so, it's bananas. I know. Um, I'm she obsessed also... with the double chin lady. I'm like, she goes like this. And I'm, <laughs> I, I watched it. I was like, I need to start doing my makeup like this. I have a slight <laughs> obsession with the bridal makeup people because they can like take like a very normal woman to like full Instagram model status. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so fascinating to see, but you can see how much their, the shape of their face changes. And I always wonder like, what do the grooms do when they like get down to the other side of the aisle? Like he's used to what seeing you, you in the morning, waking up, looking right. like you. And now suddenly it's the biggest day of your life and you look completely different. Like, how does that? And also like, if then he likes her, how do we get her back? <laughs> She's expensive. <laughs> so the one day a year you get me to look like I'm on right. postcard and the rest of it, you married. <laughs> you married it. Oh man, I've watched a million of those tutorials where people completely change ethnicities, let alone their complete outlook on what. How did that even happen? And now people you're putting are your saying, eyelashes up here, and all of a sudden, you... <laughs> oh my god, I, I know. get it. And people are, um, did you see the thing about Beyonce? How they're claiming internet trolls out there trying to say that she was trying to be white for her Renaissance 
movie premiere look. Oh my god. Isn't it the powdered idiot. wigs and powdered face? Like that's the way it was, right? I I think she was wearing a silver dress and wanted to put on silver hair and the lights made her look a little lighter with the silver everything. And now suddenly the internet is destroying her. And her mom came out to defend her. Yeah. Once again, I don't love it when stars' moms are out there defending them. Just be quiet, Tina. I know. Actually, this one bothered me less though, because she had some pretty. She had it was some, like the like... Harry Styles hair, and he had. We had to go to his mom to defend him, and now oh, we're I forgot Beyonce. about that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this okay, whole week this has is... been like parents defending their children. Stay yeah, out but of I it. feel like this is different though, because Beyonce's mom even came out and said, "Like, you guys are idiots if you actually like look at history, like." Black women have worn platinum hair forever. Like, she's yeah. not trying to, like, break waves. Like, they've been doing this since Etta James. This is totally a cultural thing. And um, why Why are you Why are you calling out my daughter when, like, this is, like, y'all have been doing this before. Like, what's your right. problem? So I think that's interesting because she, like, kind of called out her own, like, race. Do you know what I mean? Like, you guys, the it's, <laughs> she said directly, she was like, it's a black community that's giving my daughter crap. Like, what are y'all yeah. doing? Like, are we not supposed to lift people up? Like, what? Are, what? Are, literally, what are we doing here? So I thought that was interesting because usually you see a little more. But isn't that usually them? the way it goes? Like, I know in my Portuguese community, for instance, they are like the first ones to be like, "Oh, you know, she's ours, she's ours." But if you dress weird, you look weird, you gain ten pounds. They can't wait to talk shit behind your back <laughs> and tell everybody else to talk shit behind your back. It's just the way family is. So I think that that is no different, and I'm glad that she's calling them out, but she. Once again, Tina, let your daughter fight her own Tina, battles. Because the Irish just say nothing at no. all the whole no. time. Just zero. No, they openly mock you as you are. Oh, that's true. <laughs> at the dinner table. Correct. In front of all. Like, but it's usually just about called out things, right there. Usually not about physical things. More like about your soul and who you are as a person. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good time. Hmm. Anyway. All right, so we talked about that. I want to talk a little bit about the Diddy situation. I know we've kind can of can you walk me can. through? I feel like I had it and I was following it and I lost it. I can't figure it out. Well, Tell he has now been accused by I think four people. Wow. Four, but yeah, the allegations are starting to roll up there. All but right. um, it, you know, it was kind of made a joke out of after being settled in a day. Like, Diddy did not want all of this to, like, start a big thing. So he immediately paid Cassie and, like, it went away in a weekend. Do you, do you think that, well, yeah, it was huge, though. She was trying to get money out of him first and tried to go to him and, and get, like, settle. And they basically said no. And then she went to the press. And then she got a check. So Diddy's people came out and said, this is just a cash grab. Like, she's literally trying to get money. Don't even think about it. Then she ended up getting the money and the whole thing quieted. Yep. Do you think that there was some stuff going on behind the scenes with Diddy's people? Like, y'all hate to break it to you, but like, you kind of did this. Yes. So like, we're going to have to deal with this. Yes. Know? So now there's two, three, four allegations out there right now. And I also read an interesting article about the statute of limitations is expiring. So you're going to start seeing these lawsuits happen. Oh, more often. Yeah. In the next month or two before the it, whatever closes from old stuff. Yeah. I guess New York has decided to flip that and say, never mind, we're going to leave this open because we yeah, were going to shut the door on it, but now we're not. Like, Well, it's, I'm sure because people, like, everybody's bringing their cases forward because you have these hordes of, I'm a st let's say women, but victims. You have these hordes of victims thinking in the back of their head when they go to sleep and that, like, it's now or never. Yeah. If I come up and say something. Yeah. And that's, um, so that's what I read. I don't know whether, uh, how much truth that is and what states that is in, but, um, it said where this is not the last and it won't, this is not the first either, but this will be a steady stream of cases that are being brought up and brought to light. It's unfortunate. I think with Diddy, it's to me a little bit of a classic case of like, you had so much money and power at a time where people really weren't allowed to have a voice and you did you ever watch you any of his reality shows like making the band did you ever watch no. any of those no but i was i don't know how he wasn't called out before i, I found it so gross oh, i found it like he was horrible to them and treated them like they were they should be waiting on him hand and foot to get a career it was very and that gross. was yeah and that was what was public so you can only imagine what was going on behind closed doors correct correct Blech. and i know and, and it um it kind of 
he took over the making of the band from another person <clears throat> that broke O Town, and he was basically um, f- canceled because of how horrible he was. So I I can't believe the show is continually being made. And do you think it's a Larry Perlman? Uh, Perlman. Do you think it's a cultural thing? Do you think it's a the era? thing do you think i think it's, it's a, how the industry was built yeah i was gonna say the like the industry do you think it was how they were raised because a lot of these people that had those careers like that I, i'm just gonna say it like especially the famous rappers that we know diddy included came yeah. from like really rough backgrounds that probably didn't have the best examples of like healthy relationships and in, in these rough areas of the world and the country you know and built themselves up and had amazing careers but that doesn't necessarily like teach you how to be a good human just because you get successful in music. So yeah, I can't help but wonder if it's like, a, is it an, the way they were raised? And then because you have so many people about the way they were raised with common cultural pieces there, that it's what's made the industry that way. The industry well, is allowed at that to be like, where does it, how does that Unfortunately, when you inject a bunch of money into anything, it yeah. really, things get messy, things get cloudy, and things get pushed aside because they're like, oh, we know he's a terrible person, but we're going to slap yeah. on all these cute clothes and give him an image, and then he's going to be a different person with more money, but still oh. a terrible person. <laughs> so, yeah. but I mean, you have, there's been, it, that particular genre has been marked with so much violence, too. Like, it just, I, I can't. It's just horrible. It's really it's just still, horrible. like, look I'm, at the Megan Thee Stallion thing, like shootings, yeah. murders. It's a lot. It's insane. Yeah. Is it, uh, it, so it's not really a shock, you know? No. I think um, he, they I openly am... did it, is what I'm saying. Like, I don't yeah. know why this was even shocking to anybody. I said, I've seen Diddy openly on television, on camera, belittle, berate, and treat women terribly just mm. so that they could be pop stars. It was gross. Yeah. No good. Well, yeah. The industry is changing. People's ability to speak up is changing. Um, the support for victims is changing, right? Like well, all those yeah, things and the are machinery, good. the mechanism in which it's being done is changing also. So people can bootstrap their own careers now. They don't have to go suck it up to whatever crappy company to get startup money. You yeah. know what I mean? They can just go to the bank themselves and just yeah. like bet on themselves. Yeah, it's very it's, different the way people are out there promoting themselves. It's so different. Yeah. I hope we see like a full cultural change though with this. Um, And I will say too, you know, people could be like, oh, it didn't happen. I feel like when you have four or five people that all come forward, like that's pretty, that's pretty it's significant it's enough to start a conversation on. yeah and you know he doesn't want that microscope on him so no right now or maybe we're, we're... who knows what his ego wants to be honest <laughs> that's fair he'll probably come out with an album yeah right all right do we have weird news um we do have weird news i'm kind of looking forward to our weird news okay all tell right. me well just because it was it was just ridiculous i've we've all been hangry right in my life, yes. On a Not enough to days. kill anyone, though, right? Um, <laughs> should ask boyfriend, no boyfriend. But I don't think so. <laughs> West Virginia man has been charged after allegedly trying to kill someone in Morgantown for eating all the tacos. <laughs> eating all the tacos? <laughs> yes. Yes. On okay. November 20th, deputies went to this Mongolia County Sheriff's Department. Troopers of the West Virginia State Police also responded to a residence on Warm Hollow Road for a reported dispute. Now, when the deputies <laughs> arrived, they spoke to the victim who stated that Dale Martin, 53 years old. I like how we're Mor- getting all the details. The oh, road, yeah. the name, the age. Bring it on. 53 became irate due to them eating all of the tacos. <laughs> deputies said that at that time, Martin went to a bedroom and retrieved a 22 caliber semi-automatic oh, rifle. Oh, my God. This is like kind of a case for gun reform. Right. Like, why do you need to own one of those? I'm going to go get me my gun. Can't you just go, go to the store and get some new tacos? Stop firing guns into a staircase that they had just been in. Oh, my God. And then yeah. he called the police on themselves. He Hold called the police on himself. He's like, you better get down here before I blow their head off with a 12 gauge. At least he's self-aware. <laughs> Have 
Have you ever been that hangry? No. No, because I... I can cook for myself. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> Give me a granola bar. <laughs> I'm I have sorry. A bit of a temper, and I'm mature enough now to like let it roll through my body and not react. However, when I'm a little bit hungry, it comes out of my mouth a little bit more than it should, just in like pure sass unnecessary sarcastic sass that's fair and um that's i think where my hangry comes out like you can't say like can i hold the door open for you and i'm like why i need somebody to hold the door open for me for the love of- <laughs> i can open my own goddamn door <laughs> People are but like, if you ate oh. up all the tacos you might have a problem oh my god thank you for opening the door <laughs> yeah, it's just not a food i would shoot over it's just not pizza what food would you shoot over i don't think anything creme brulee I, well, I really wanted day. to shoot my son after he ingested an entire pecan pie. And I'm saying pecan uh, on Thanksgiving. An entire one. A whole one. A whole pie. I can't. I'm like processing the calories in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> like, How did? What I want to know is like where in his brain did he think that was okay? Like I'm going to just sit and eat the whole pie. A whole thing. And a, an entire sleeve of Coca-Cola. The kid is like walking poster child of diabetes at this point. Oh my God. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> well, he's got the diabetes. <laughs> were you like you could have at least eaten the apple? There would have been fruit in that. Like what? <laughs> a vegetable? Anything green in there? Is there anything? It's just like pure rot in there. Oh Gross. Was it on Thanksgiving or post Thanksgiving? Did you like go the, to get the day after Thanksgiving? That was the second pie. There was more pie. <laughs> oh my god! It's impressive. But it's my really. favorite thing. Like I wanted a slice of it, and I was like, "Are you kidding me right now?" I'm so mad. Do we need to make you a new pie? I make a I'm pretty good to... pecan pie. I'm down for it. If you want to make me one for my birthday, I would love that. It is coming up. You. Okay, <laughs> noted. Excellent. That's All right, it. get well, perky with it. us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the First Shot Morning Show. See you Have Friday. a great day. The First Shot Morning Show is produced by Lemon Radio. When life gives you lemons, make radio. We encourage everyone to listen happier.com.